Okay, so uh, this is basically the beginning of our um, uh, our parametric table assignment. And so what I want to do is kind of a, do a, a, a quick overview or kind of a refresher for um, uh, for Revit, just how to create parametric families and um, how to create uh, the tabletop. All right, so in this project, so what I'm going to do is um, this is what the actual project will look like when we're finished with it. Hang on a second. Oops. All right, so this is our table and chair set here. All right, so the thing I want to do is just kind of go over how to create that tabletop. All right, uh, and to give it uh, width, depth, and height parameters uh, that you guys can build into there. And so let me close this. All right, to start this project out, we're going to use a uh, template. All right, so once I'm in the kind of entry of the home page, I guess, for um, Revit 14, I'm going to go to New. All right, and I'm going to look for our template. The template we're going to use for this project is the furniture template. So I'm going to look around here, A, B, C, D, E. Yeah, here we go. Uh, furniture, just plain old furniture dot RFT. All right, and I'm say open. Yeah, and then we're going to do a save as. So file, save as. All right, and I'm going to save it as a family. And then just kind of put it somewhere where you're gonna f where you're gonna be able to find it pretty quickly, and I'm just gonna call this one Brett Parametric Table. All right, hit save. Okay, so as a refresher, the first thing that you're looking at when you're looking at this model is you see two crosshairs, two green lines here. These are basically reference planes. And what they basically represent is the origin point or the insertion point for your model. So um, when you create this table here, this will be basically the assertion, insertion point for that table. All right. And um, so there's a setting on here. When I put this reference plane in here, there's a little setting at the bottom here that says defines origin. And that little check box, that little box should be checked. All right. So when I select that reference plane in the middle here, it should say on the properties dialog box that it should be say defines origin. So there can only be two. There's a one horizontal, one vertical, right? And that's always going to be um, and uh, um, that box when that box is checked, that basically the intersection of the vertical and horizontal reference planes becomes your origin point. So I can put a new reference plane in. So I'll just put a new reference plane in here, and uh, the, and the shortcut for that is RP. And so I put a new reference plane in, and then I check that box there. And you'll notice down here on this the original horizontal one, it's unchecked. All right, so only one horizontal and one vertical can be checked. So now this is my origin point because on this uh, reference plane, orig defines origin is checked, and on this reference plane, defines origin is checked. So now that is my insertion point. All right, so I can just delete that, and we'll go back to the original defines origin. All right. So here is basically my two reference planes. And you'll, the other thing you'll notice too is that they're pinned, so they don't actually didn't they get bumped and um, and knocked out of the way. All right, so there's basically five steps to to starting a uh, a family when you're doing a family. The first step is one is to uh, one pick the right template, which we've done furniture. Uh, two, the second step is basically putting in your reference planes. So putting on all the reference planes in. Then th step three. After you put in all your reference planes, all your necessary reference planes, um, then the second step is to dimension those reference planes. So that's step three. And then four would be then changing those dimensions into um, parameters. So we're going to convert all of our dimensions into parameters. And then the fifth step is uh, is then building the geometry and locking that geometry to, um, to the reference plane. So let me just kind of, I like to use this analogy here, so let me open up. Um, I don't know how you spell it. Is that right? All right, so these you've seen these things, right? Marionettes, the little puppets. Okay, that's kind of my analogy for how this all works. So let me just pick this really creepy one here. All right, that's a nice creepy one. So we've all, you know, you all have seen the, like, the puppets, the marionette puppets and everything like that. So you have basically the marionette, the puppet itself, which is your geometry, right, in this case. So it would be our tabletop. Then you have these little strings that are attached to the geometry, which is, in our case, will be the reference planes. And then um, then you also have that little stick in the hand at the top, which is basically the, um, uh, the dimensions. So the dimensions basically push the reference planes 
and the reference planes pull the geometry. The geometry, in this case the little puppet here, is attached to the reference plane and, uh, and then is pushed and pulled by the dimensions. Uh, um, the reference planes are pushed and pulled by the dimensions. Alright, so just to do that real quickly on here, so I'm going to put in a couple of reference planes. Alright, so we're going to basically create a square table. Alright, so I'm going to put in four reference planes keeping those 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 uh two center lines kind of about the about the midpoint there so i put in yeah rp for the is a shortcut for that so i put in these four reference planes around the outside of that origin point these so these two are the original ones all right so i'm basically framing that box of that table that tabletop All right, so then that's, uh, what was that, step two? And I think step three was putting in the um, dimensions. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dimension those reference planes that I just created. So there's my width, and there's my height. Or sorry, my length, I guess we'll say that. So this will be my width, this will be my length. And I only need two of them. So I only need this one, and I only need this one. I don't need them on the other sides. All right, then step four was then converting those dimensions into ref into uh, parameters. So I'm going to pick this dimension here and to do that, to change this dimension into a parameter, I'm going to go up here to the options bar and I'm going to go to label and I'm going to go to add parameter. All right. So let me do that one. So I pick the re so you pick the dimension, go to the option bar, go to label and then scroll down till you get to add parameter. All right, so here's where we create the par we turn that dimension into a parameter. So I'm going to just type in width and then say okay. So now I have a parameter. All right. Let's do the same thing. We're going to call this one length. Or no, let's call it depth. Sorry, depth. So pick that dimension, go to the options bar, add parameter, call this one depth. All right. So then Let's just test this thing out. We're just going to test it out here. So this is what I call four blue squares. It's actually called families and uh, family types, but um, it makes more sense to call it four blue squares. So um, I click on that, and what this basically is is this is just basically a um, kind of a dialog box that shows you all of the different parameters that you've created. Now we've only created two at this point. We've created width and depth, but here I can actually change it. So I'm going to change that to four foot by four foot. All right, and then I'm going to hit apply. Right, and it'll do something like that. All right, so it does something like that. So here's our original origin point here, and it looks pretty, you know, kind of looks a little messed up. Um, so let me. So what I'm going to do is I want to keep. So in order to keep the origin point at the center of my table, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in an equal dimension. So what I'll do is I'll go dimension here, uh, dimension to the um, left hand side, the left reference plane that center reference plane and the right reference plane. All right, one continuous dimension. So don't do separate dimensions, just do one continuous dimension. All right, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select that dimension and hit the EQ button. All right, so what that's going to do is basically, no matter what I change the width to, these guys are always going to keep, keep it centered uh, about that origin point. All right, so I'm going to dimension, yeah, so dimension, so when the dimension, uh, to dim you want to make sure you dimension the reference plane. The reference plane will highlight in blue, so I'm going to dimension there, center point, that centered reference line, and that in reference line, and then hit the EQ button, that'll spread it back out. Now this width is no longer four feet, all right, but let's do that on the vertical one for the depth here. There, and then do the same thing, hit the EQ button. All right, so it crunches it up. Okay, so let's go back to four blue squares, and then let's change it back to four foot by four foot again. All right. So what that EQ dimension does is it basically keeps the uh, these reference uh, these reference the distance between 
this reference, the left reference plane and the center equal so that the origin point stays at the center of that table. Does that make sense? I hope that makes sense. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, okay. Um, yeah, let me let me wrap this up real quick, and then I'll come over and take a look at it. All right. So, um, so here is a, so basically we have our reference plane. So that's basically step four. Then step five was then creating the geometry. All right, and the geometry is basically then we're going to attach that geometry to the reference planes. All right. So to do that, I'm going to go to the create tab and create my geometry there. So create, and I'm going to create an extrusion. Okay. All right, so I'm in sketch mode, and then what I want to do is I'm going to create a box basically on the inside of this thing here. So I'm going to go to pick lines. All right, I'm going to pick those four reference planes. I'm going to pick it and then hit um, and then lock it. So what that does is it's going to lock the edge of that geometry to that uh, reference plane. All right, I'm going to do that on all four sides. So pick the reference plane, lock it. Pick the reference plane, lock it. Pick the reference plane, lock it. And then I say trim. So I'm going to trim those corners so that it's a closed loop. Alright, so I basically I've created the outline of my uh, geometry and I've locked it to the reference planes. Alright, and I'm going to hit OK. Alright. So there it is. So, um, all right, so going back to that analogy, so I've got the geometry. The geometry is then locked to the reference planes. Then the reference planes are being pushed and pulled by the the dimensions, and the dimensions have been converted to parameters. So that's how we make this parameter parametric cube. So um, I'm going to go to the 3D view of it. All right, so I'm going to go to 3D view. Let's test this thing out. So I'm going to go back to four blue squares. All right, I've got my width and depth at four feet. So let me just type in five foot and let's say two feet just any kind of random numbers. I'm going to hit OK. And so it should change that geometry. So it should push and pull that geometry. Oh, a foot. You, yeah, typically it'll give it a thickness of about a foot. All right, so let's go back to four foot by four foot. All right, so then let me show you how to create that height parameter real quick, and then um, and then we'll, we'll finish this. Okay, so everybody go to your uh, front elevation. So it should look something like that. So you're looking at it right at the front elevation. All right, um, so to create a height parameter, what we're going to do is we're going to create a reference plane. So I'm going to go create reference plane, and then just draw it across the top horizontally at any height. It really doesn't matter what height it is. All right, so this is going to be our reference plane for our height. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a dimension. So I'm going to dimension from that new reference plane I just created to the reference level. All right. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that dimension and convert that to a a, uh, a parameter. All right. So once I've got that reference plane dimension, I select the dimension. And then up here at label, I'm going to say add parameter. And then height. All right, so now what I want to do is then attach the top of this um, top of this cube to that reference plane. And there's a couple different ways you can do that. You can do it um, with the align command. So I'm going to align, pick that reference plane, and then pick the top of that geometry, and then lock it. All right, that's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is you can just pick the select the geometry. You'll get this little blue triangle grip. And I pull that up to that uh, reference plane, and then I can lock it from there. Yeah, so the bottom is locked to the reference level. So what we're going to do is we want to give it a table thickness. We want to give it a, um, you know, so for this to be a table top, it's going to have a thickness of about two inches to an inch and a half or so. All right, so uh, what I want to do is I want to actually take this bottom reference, pl uh, this bottom face of that cube, and attach it to a reference plane up here somewhere. All right, so let's do that. So I'm going to go to create. I'm going to draw a new reference plane slightly underneath that um, top reference plane. And again, the distance apart doesn't really um, matter right now. All right, so then what I'm going to do is I'm going to select my geometry, 
grab the grip down here at the bottom and then pull it up so it attaches to that reference plane and I'm going to lock it. Alright, so there's my tabletop thickness. Alright, and notice it's attached to that reference plane so when I move the reference plane up and down it pulls the geometry. Alright, so let's change our table height. So to go to four blue squares, I'm going to change my table height to three feet. Oh, so four feet, that's fine. Four by. And notice it pulled the top of that geometry, but it didn't pull that bottom part. All right. So did, what we're going to do here is I'm going to actually put a dimension here and then change it to an inch and a half and then lock that dimension at an inch and a half. All right. So what I do is I got a dimension. I dimension to that top reference plane, bottom reference plane, and now I'm going to pick that bottom reference plane. Now I can edit that dimension. And I'm going to go 1.5 inches. All right, so now my table thickness is an inch and a half. Then I can just select that dimension and lock it. And so now that tabletop thickness will be forever um, an inch and a half. So now what I do is I change my, I go to four blue squares, change the height to two foot six, and it drops it down and it keeps that that as an uh, inch and a half. Now you could actually change this into a parameter and call it tabletop thickness so that you could control the tabletop thickness if you wanted with a parameter, but it's not, not absolutely necessary. So, all right, so that basically, so let's just tr test this thing out. So let's go to the 3D view. Let's go to four blue squares. All right, let's change my width to six foot by eight foot by three feet tall. And I hit okay. And so it should spread out and then kind of uh, jump up to three feet. All right, there you go. Okay, so a couple things you want to keep in mind, too. When you're creating dimensions, when you're doing any kind of dimension, dimension to a reference plane, don't dimension to a geometry because it'll, it'll mess up your uh, parameters. So uh, another good rule is, a rule of thumb is to dimension to reference planes and then uh, and not to geometry and then just lock the geometry to the reference plane yeah yep all right so that's that's kind of the basics of uh, creating that that tabletop for our project